Do you ever look at your controller's pH or temperature graph and wonder if those swings are normal? I often tell people that stability is key in keeping a healthy reef full of SPS coral. And you know, we can look at these graphs and they're anything but stable. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman. And today we'll be talking about a study that came out which looks at the relationship between pH, temperature, depth, and the time of day. And also, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, take a moment, do it now, and you won't miss any future updates like this one. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you. It's great to have you back with me. So, if you're interested in the paper itself, it is called Dial Temperature and pH Variability Scale with Depth Across Diverse Coral Reef Habitats. And the link to it is down below, so check it out. Don't get tripped up on the world dial either. It just means that they're going to look at a 24-hour window of time in the paper. In fact, the team deployed pH and temperature sensors to five different reefs in both the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. They measured the pH and temperature of the water, as well as the time and the depth that they had placed the sensors at. The research team collected data from all of these different sensor arrays for between 5.5 to 17.5 days at each location. The sensor arrays were actually resting on the very bottom of the water on the ocean floor, not suspended in the water column like you might expect maybe from a buoy or something like that. You can think of short-term changes in water chemistry and temperature almost like ocean weather. And as you know, a cold front kind of moves through where you live and the weather gets colder. Maybe it's windy as the front passes. Maybe there's some rain or even snow as it passes. No, the same sort of stuff happens in the ocean. Um, ocean currents move around the water. Upwellings come up from the depths and bring cooler water to the surface. And so obviously all of this has an impact on both pH and temperature. Of course, we don't have upwellings in our reef tanks. Uh, so there's got to be something else going on. And there is. Biological processes take place. Algae grows, it uses CO2, coral grows, it uses calcium, carbonate, bicarbonate, and other chemicals that are in the water. And all of this has an impact on your tank's pH. And of course, like mine are, your lights are on. And they're the main reason your tank heats up during the day. And that is just the same. The sun is the main reason that the ocean heats up. And in fact, the ocean is warmest in the afternoon, just like our tank is. In the study, the pH varied based on the time of day from about 0 0.03 to 0.46 units. And so that means that my tank, which maxed out yesterday at 8.03, is within the wild range since the minimum after that was 7.84, which is only a difference of 0.19 units. Temperature was more stable, as you might expect, but it too varied, and it varied between 0.1 degree and 5.3 degrees Celsius. That makes me feel better about my temperature, which of course I measure in Fahrenheit, not Celsius, but um, I have a maximum temperature about 81, 82 each afternoon. And I only have about a two degree swing Fahrenheit, of course. So what is the impact of all of this on the coral that lives there? In fact, there is an impact. It seems like short term swings in temperature and pH can actually mitigate larger swings like those that are being caused by climate change, up to a certain point at least. Also, corals exposed to pH swings tend to calcify faster, and they even grow larger than corals which were not exposed to recurring changes in pH, which I thought was pretty cool. You wouldn't guess that. Interestingly, the authors also found a direct linear relationship between pH, temperature, and the depth that the measurements were taken at. And so using this model, they can predict what the daily range of values might be for another reef if they just know the depth of the water. And so they did that. They used another paper that provided 118 measurements from other reefs and their model held. I thought that this paper was really neat. It's an interesting that temperature and pH vary based on depth. You would think that it moves around and it would all be the same. But it's even more interesting to see that the daily swings that we see from our own reef tanks are not completely out of line with what happens on a wild reef. It's also interesting that the corals that are subjected to more variation and change are actually more resilient against bleaching and climate change and the change itself. So I guess some variation in our parameters is actually a good thing. It'll harden, make our corals more hardy. So thanks for watching. 
I really hope you enjoyed the video. Again, there's a link down below if you want to check the paper out. I would suggest you do that. Take a moment to hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. And if you are, thank you. Thank you again. So I'll see you next time. Bye.